everybody, welcome back to another Creative tutorial. Today we're gonna go over two-point perspective within Krita with the assistant tools. So we're gonna demonstrate this on one of my comic pages for Baron Snake. Um, if you want to know more about that, you can watch my, I think it's a pinned or highlighted video on my YouTube page about the comic projects I'm working on. So if you wanna learn more about that, go watch that video. Otherwise, ignore that and we're gonna get into the perspective grids. All right, so we are going to demonstrate the two-point perspective with this comic page I have set up. As you can see, I've already been utilizing the assistant tools and it's been my life a lot easier. So we're gonna go ahead and try and use the two-point perspective for this shot up here for a very simple like environment or for a building specifically. So the first thing we wanna do is mark our horizon line. Like what angle do we want it? What um, do you want it straight? Do you want it perfect? This is kind of at an angle to add a little bit more dimension and dr like dramatics to, the, to this panel. So I'm going to go ahead and start making my horizon line, which is right here. So that's in an angle. And now the third point is going to basically make the, um, the view of where I'm looking. So if I were to look at this head on, theoretically, I have a street. We're just going to use a city, um, for a good example, like an explanation. This would be the, the corner I'm looking at right here where my mouse is. And then to the left would be one street I'm looking down and to the right would be another street I'm looking down. Obviously you don't have to use this for that type of situation, but that's how this perspective is generally laid out. So I'm gonna go ahead and click, there, that's fine. If I, want, oops. if I want to go ahead and move that, I can click this and I can move it here. So if the house, or the building over here let's say this is the corner of the house and that's where i want to see it by moving this i can now have a little bit more of an idea of how those walls are going to look when i start drawing them as you can see the, the wall would be in this angle and the front of the house may go in this angle angle along that bottom floor line now this is a very dense um grid here we can't change how many lines are appearing but we can change the density so if we lower this we get a pretty dense uh perspective but you can see it widens your the space between the top and the bottom so if you want to think about, about it as a ceiling and a floor it makes it longer so theoretically you could use this for maybe a top down view but still have that very angled perspective and I'll demonstrate this once we go over the tool options. If I want to have a less dense and maybe make it look squished, maybe I'm looking at it from the bottom up, then I can increase the density. All right, so we're actually gonna just put that back down to around one. And we're gonna go over the other options for this perspective tool. So we do have enable vertical ruler. So if we go to our brush, you can see this line shows up, this crosshair and there's a line going from top to bottom that is basically telling me that if i were to draw a line going this way let me actually hit snap to assistance because that is going to have us make our line so if i make let me make this a larger brush size so if i have this line here and i want to make my building or a box or not necessarily a box but whatever it is i need here i can see where that vertical line is going to be and you can see immediately that it's keeping with that perspective. So if I need to, I can just draw it and it's, it's exactly how I want. And you can see how the direction of my line is gonna change how this looks. There we go. that would be how you would use the perspective grid. So I'm actually just gonna erase this real quick. I'm gonna turn off snap to assistance. Go back to my brush, turn that back on. And we're gonna go back to the assistant tool and we're going to make sure this is selected by clicking this dotted box. And we're gonna turn off the enable vertical ruler and go back to our uh, brush tool. And you can see that vertical line is now gone. So it removes the vertical line, so you can no longer make vertical um, point or I'm sorry lines when you go to draw. So it is strictly just going to be 
the horizontal lines. Now I will say, um, if you are not perfectly aligned with where your brush stroke is going to be, it can be a little wonky. So I can't make any vertical lines, which sucks, but that's okay. But let's say I want to make a line going this way. Oh no, it's not going to do it. Just be mindful. There we go. So I wanted to go from left to right to make a diagonal line going the other way, but because I wasn't aligned properly with the grid, it didn't do that. So just be mindful that that may be a little bit of a challenge if you're getting used to this. All right, I'm gonna erase these lines again. Back to my brush tool, snap to assistance. So here, um, this should be pretty much a universal option for all the assistant tools, but you can actually increase or decrease the magnetism. So as you can see, it's not a perfectly uh, angled line here, but it's loose enough. So if you want a little less control, so you can go ahead and maybe start making more vertical lines without having that vertical line showing in the assistant tool, you can lower the magnetism and then you have a little bit, you have a little bit more flexibility. Now, if you want, um, you can turn off snap to single line. I would rather keep it on because if you don't, it gets really weird. But if you want to have fun and just make some weird shapes, go ahead and do that. And basically, it's not snapping to a single line anymore. So if I do, I keep this on and I do this and I move my mouse around or my pen or whatever, it's sticking to that single line. Turning that off, it's like jumping from one line to another. I'm not entirely sure why you would use that, <laughs> but it's something, you know, if you want to have fun with it, maybe you want to do a weird, um, like a sci-fi type thing and you just want to scribble something and get an interesting perspective out of it, you can do that. And then of course we have snap to eraser. So if we have, let me actually make some points here. If we have snap to eraser, we use our eraser tool it's basically sticking with that grid as well. If we keep that off, I can move my eraser all over the place and it's not stuck to any of those perspective lines. So back in the perspective tool, let's say we played with this and we actually didn't like how it was looking. So let me actually change the color of this so we can see this a little bit easier because gray on gray is very difficult to see. We have our two points here to kind of change the angle of the horizon, the horizon line. You can just click on this and move this, rotate that. Now what's interesting is these two lines here, these anchors as I've been calling them, kind of stay within a relative, relatively similar distance to this horizon line point. So if I go to take the second point on here, I can change the direction for either of these. And if I want to change, so if I like maybe this grid, right? But I don't like where the horizon is and I want to kind of change the overall um, dramatic second, or if I want to change the exaggeration of the perspective grid, like if I can take that first point and I can start moving that farther away. You can see my grid is changing. Like these boxes are getting a little bit bigger. I'm getting more room to work with. So I'm kind of in a way moving things closer to the viewer. You can kind of move these points around so you don't um, affect the angle that you chose. And same here, like maybe I want to, now let's say I do like this point but I want to move the horizon line at an angle this way. You can actually also do that by moving the, taking that first point on these um, anchor points here and dragging that. And you can see the horizon line is moving along that. So that kind of helps as well if you like the angle of something and you want to just be more specific, you can do that. Let's move this around because I want it closer. It's going crazy. Oops. All right. You can see I'm moving this around to make it a little bit more to what I want. And like a, oops. 
And like I said, if you want to move this point, like which is where your eye is gonna be looking. So if this, you can kind of see too, her foot's gonna be directing your angle to where you're gonna look, which is actually should be closer to over here towards the edge. So this, I'm going to kind of move it a little bit further. And I'm actually gonna move the whole thing down a little bit so it's more in line. There we go. And I think that works. I think I'm pretty satisfied with how this is gonna look overall if I were to put the buildings and stuff here. All right, before I forget, we wanna go over the two-point perspective limit assistant area, how that looks. So if we go ahead and make our perspective grid here, we actually have extra points showing up after the first three. So if you go ahead and make those, you can actually change where that grid is showing up with like a cropped view. So if you are only within the panel and you don't want these lines going every which way all over your, your canvas, because it is a lot, it can be annoying, uh, you can actually crop that view and limit it to a very specific view. You can go ahead and revise that with these two points here. So if you um, are like me and sometimes get a little overwhelmed with so much going on because it's so busy sometimes, you can actually go ahead and just crop that view and you won't have to worry about it going every which way. Now, if I have a multiple assistant tools and I want to differentiate them because I turn this green but this is also green, I can do a custom color and I can go ahead and change that to something else. So now I have two assistant tools on here that are different colors. So if you're going to be using multiple perspectives um, for different parts of whatever it is you're doing, maybe a comic panel, or maybe you're just trying out different angles for your illustration, and you're not sure which one you like, you can go ahead and color code them and say, you know, the red ones are, I didn't like them so much, but the green one, um, the green and blue ones I actually do like. So you can do that as well. And you can always lock them to make sure you don't mess with them and you can turn off their visibility. Now, if you turn off the visibility, when we go to the brush tool, it's not going to be affected. So if you turn the visibility back on, now it's going to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of rough out a quick building here and show you how it works in action. This is just a really rough sketch. This is not a finalized concept for the house, but you can kind of see, make sure you turn this or turn the visibility off, how that perspective grid allows me to kind of make the basic shapes and then I can go ahead and stylize it after, but still keep it believable with the perspective. Now the overall uh, perspective uh, might need a little bit of work in terms of lining it up with the rest of the scene, but you can basic, you can kind of see how that works. Worst case, I could just actually scale this down and line it up with a um, revised assistant tool here if I wanted to, or I could just leave it and call it a day. I think it, for the most part, I think this works oops, really well as the um, concept for what's happening here. Um, I do need a little bit of work for the path, kind of revise that, like I said, but I was able to make my building with a relative ease and I can go back and stylize it. So I was able to block out where windows would be. I have kind of a funny rounded roof here, which I probably would change, but I didn't need to rely on the perspective grid to make a perfect roof. Basically, I can go ahead and stylize it later. Kind of like, um, the hay roofs that like you would see. Maybe I could go and stylize it a little bit more like this. You can see, there we go. You know, it's still within perspective, but it's got style to it. So it helps add that believability and realism to a stylized little building. 
And that's it for the two-point perspective tool. It's very simple, nothing too complicated. Um, I think it's a good starting point if you're just getting into drawing and doing some basic environments. And it's, you know, like I said, simple. So if you learned anything from this, let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions about it, um, also let me know in the comments below. I will do my best to answer those. And I will see you in the next video.